This is Russ Anderson with another tutorial. By now, I think many of us have seen an awful lot of that little walking, talking gecko. So suppose we wanted to make our own little video and uh, have the gecko say uh, whatever we might find entertaining that particular day. So we might go out and shoot something that looks like this for starters to have the gecko walking down the street. Let's try uh, giving a solve on this and see what happens. By the way, this is all uh, HD footage that we're watching. So it's just uh, working through and doing the solve now. And the thing to notice about this is, you know, we, we've just got a piece of, of footage of a flat road surface. And that's actually one of the chief uh, no-nos here in the world of match moving. You have to have a 3D scene to get a 3D solution. So let's see what happens when we feed this in. Looks like we've gotten into a bit of trouble. Here we've got a field of view of 180 degrees. Okay, doesn't sound too good. We take a look at our solution, and we've got this big wall thing. So clearly that hasn't gone very well, and we don't have anything kind of usable, even though all the tracking is perfectly good. The problem is there just isn't that 3D information in the content of the tracking data in the first place. Not a bug, it's just the physics of the real world. Now one thing that we can do to recover from this situation sometimes. If we do have a measurement from the set, we can take advantage of that. I'm just gonna reset that solution and now go and adjust the field of view here to a known value. You'll see where this comes from in a little bit and set this to be a known lens. And here's the key thing. On the set, a lot of times you're measuring a focal length you need to have a really accurate back plate width as well in order for this number to be, you know, to get a really accurate field of view. In a shot like this, where it's a choice between a field of view of 180 degrees or something, you know, it may not be key to get something that's super accurate. Just anything might be better than nothing. But now let's go and do the solution again. And you see, presto, we do get something out of this that's reasonable. I can set up a little coordinate system on this. And now here we do have the camera on the track flying overhead. And we've got our points. And we could go and uh, drop in our little guy someplace. So that might be our mock uh, gecko. Of course, he's supposed to be walking. So this is one way to go, but this isn't really the right way. And it's not really the way that it's being done in the commercials either, if you take a look. Here's a different thing to shoot. And this is really the, the right way to go. OK, here you can see that we've got something in the background not just the flat road surface. So now I can just fire up the auto tracker on this. And this is about uh, 300 frames of HD. This is going to take a little bit longer. One of the ways that people get in trouble with these super flat shots is when they have something that looks good like this during part of the shot, but then in the middle of the shot, all of a sudden the camera will go flying in some direction, and all of a sudden it'll be looking at something that's deadly flat again. And basically, you know, all hell breaks out and you get some crazy things happening in that middle flat section. So it's important to, to watch out for that and try and leave some things in the scene that are going to keep a full 3D solution available, a full 3D set of information available to be pulled out by the match move process. Now here you see that it's uh, worked through the shot nicely. No problems at all. Now you can just set up a little coordinate system again. And now maybe we'll use a couple of these spots along the uh, edge of the curb as our reference. And again we could uh, Drop in our little guy here 
And uh, he's now free to be the anti-pitch man of our dreams. So this uh, footage is out there on the website for everybody to take a look at and uh, have some fun with. Take care.